Hi, everybody, and welcome to week five. How many of you can believe that we're already this far along? I mean, it is insane to me how fast we are moving. Um, I do want to say that uh, before we start to, uh, looking at module five, just want to let you know that I am a little bit behind on some of your grades from last weekend. Uh, things got backed up and it kind of piled on. So I've been working through those, but I should be caught up in the next day or so. So expect to see some of those things come out. Also, you'll see your midterms come out. Uh, I believe later this week, uh, I have to submit those, uh, I believe tonight. So uh, there will be some, you'll be seeing some movement on your grades and stuff and just be kind of expecting that. Let's take a look at module number five, week number five. And this is all about responding to your peers and revising. So um, th first off, this is a, you know, a lot of the things that we do in here set you up for things that you'll do in other classes. And you might have already done them in some of your other classes. This is a discussion board, right? It's a very common, like, post your, post your initial post by Wednesday, reply to three other people by Sunday. Um, this is a very common assignment. But one of the things that a lot of people kind of miss on that is really the how to be appropriate or how to do this well. And so I know a lot of times, you know, that, that you get, like, these little half answers or little kind of like, hey, that sounded great. This module is supposed to help you with that response process. We're also looking at the revision process, and that is going through and making your paper better, making it stronger, making it more effective, right? Um, and so that's that kind of, uh, you know, we're doing those two things together. We're using the peer responses to get your paper revised and turned in better. Uh, so that's kind of the overview of this module. Uh, one of the three big assignments that you will get this time around is the tutor.com and i saw that some of you have already done this uh, as ivy tech students uh you get a certain number of hours free. i think it's like 12 hours free of tutor.com access after that there's a fee if you used it past that uh this is a great service um because it, it's it's on your schedule you submit it when you are available they, they go through, they do a really good job of giving you some feedback and some ideas and look at this and think of this and here's a problem that you might want to address. I will warn you that unfortunately they don't know like the exact specific uh, assignment that you're doing. Um, you know, they will, like if you're saying you're doing comparative analysis, they will know what that is. Um, but you might have to give them more specifics about what your assignment is, like what you have to be doing, right? They're not, you know, an Ivy Tech group, uh, but they, uh, they, they understand the types of papers. They just won't know your exact specific assignment. So you might have to talk to them through that a little bit. For the tutor.com activity, there are two things that you will do. Uh, you will log on. You will do the tutoring session with them. Um, at the end, you will have the option to get an email, um, tran uh, a transcript emailed to you uh, of your conversation. You will want to get that. You want to copy that and paste that in uh, and turn that in to me. Also, this reflection piece, and this is like 150, 200 words. It's not horribly long, half page, a little bit more. And it just reflects on these questions right here. This idea of what worked well and what could have been better. And did they provide you any useful feedback, right? What was the feedback that most resonated with you? Uh, so there's a set of questions there to, to work through. I don't expect to see each of those questions answered necessarily. Uh, I don't see like a question and then an answer typed out. But that you hit that kind of reflection. You're looking back and you're saying, hey, I was on there. I got this. This is what I enjoyed about it. This is what I thought was good. This is what I didn't get. What was I really looking for? So it's just that kind of reflection. Again, it's only a half a page or so. Uh, it's not horribly long. All right. Uh, that's one of the assignments. And the next assignment then will be this, the peer response. Uh, and I saw that most of you have already posted your papers in um, uh, the discussion board so that others can view that. And that is excellent. I love that already. Um, and I'm starting to see some responses trickle in. As you are looking for people to respond to, some things to think about. Um, I would really recommend that you find people that are maybe using articles different than yours. Uh, because I think that gives you a fresh perspective, right? And gives them some better feedback. Because, you know, one of the things that they have to do is they have to be able to say, here's an article and here's what I found in it, right? And then do that comparison piece. Well, if it's an article you're already familiar with, you're going in with some preconceived notions or you're filling in some holes that maybe they've left, right? So one of the things I would suggest as you're going through and looking for those discussion boards or finding some people that 
use some articles different than yours. Uh, I think another thing too is, and this is just a practical matter, is try to find people that don't have a lot of feedback yet. If you're looking through and someone's got five, six, seven, think about somebody else, right? They've already got a lot of feedback. Let's find somebody that hasn't got some feedback yet or has only got like one reply. And that will help kind of spread that out a little bit and let more people get more feedback. Um, there are five questions here for you to look at. You pick three of these to look at when you're looking at the paper. Now, in your response, please put the letter like A and then your ex, then your response and D and put your response. That way your uh, the original poster knows exactly what you're looking at. So you might specifically look at the introduction and thesis statement. Uh, that's really important. The introduction set not only gets our attention and introduces the, the, the topic, the thesis to us, but it also sets up the expectation, right? If your paper, if your introduction is really flat and straightforward and bland, your audience is gonna expect the rest of the paper to be that as well, right? And then what happens if they get this really bland start, but then the paper is like high energy and lots of information and really fun, there's a mismatch, right? And so your reader has some difficulty with that. Um, it also kind of sets up that negative impression, right? Like, oh, this is gonna be awful. So the introduction is really important because it sets up that tone for your reader, gets them engaged early. The comparative analysis, that's the actual process of comparing the different points and saying, here's what this one had and here's what this one had. How are they similar? And then why does that really matter? Why does it significant that they share that common element, right? Um, appropriate and sufficient support. Did they really back up their claims? They said this, did they really provide enough information? Did they really provide the, the, the support you needed as a reader to fully buy into what they were saying? Organization, pretty again, that's pretty self-explanatory. Was the presentation of that argument well done, well rounded? Was it logical? Was it presented in a way that walked you through and gave you the information you need? Or you could look at just like, hey, here's one big thing I found. Here's something that like I see this. I really would suggest that you think about revising this. Now, one of the things about your uh, when you are replying to people or when you are looking at your uh, responses, the responses that you get back from others. <clears throat> first off, remember, that's just feedback. That's one person's reaction to your writing. And they may or may not have read it very well before they responded to it. And so I want you to keep that in mind. Like these are suggestions and feedback. They're not gospel truth. So if they say, I would really change this, or I think I'd add this, or I do take that in, you know, take that, consider that weigh your options, look at your other feedback. All right. Just because somebody says that I would do blank doesn't mean you have to do that blank item. Right. So please kind of keep that in mind that, you know, you are trying to use all the feedback, but it is your paper in the end. It's not theirs. Also, remember, and I said this before, we want to keep that language neutral. We want to look at specifics. Hey, in paragraph three, I said th I saw this. We want to use that neutral language. Like I felt that this wasn't the most effective. Uh, maybe there was a better way of saying this. Uh, I really like this idea, but we could use some more support. Really think about the way that your responses come across. All right. If you're like, that sucks, or I hated that, or this is awful, you need to fix that. You know, those come across on a different level. Those aren't constructive. That's just criticism. And so you really want to make sure that the comments that you're giving really kind of help that reader or that writer get better and improve that paper. And by the way, in your responses, I am not opposed to you finding some things that they did well. Right. Like, hey, you know, when you're doing the introduction, you're making those comments like this was great. This is what I, I loved. And I love this. I loved how you did this. Keep expanding on that. And build that out more. Right. Uh, the last big assignment that you have for this module is the actual final draft of the comparative analysis. Some things to remember when you're doing this, obviously style MLA or APA. You have to have it in that style. Use those citations. Use that reference or works cited page. You know, that's those are easy points. Make sure that you've done that. When you're doing your comparison, you really want to answer that question of the why. OK, it's not enough to say here's a thing and here's a thing that they both share or here's a thing and here's a thing that need, you know, they that's you know, different from each other. 
That's part of the assignment. The real significance is the analysis. That's what we're really looking for. Okay. These two items share the same thing. They both looked at the same topic, but in totally different ways for totally different reasons. Why is that significant? Why is that important to know? What does that say about those two articles? The analysis piece is the most important element in this uh, in this writing. Um, I don't know if there's like a magical number necessarily. I won't be going through and like, oh, look, you know, 30 percent this and 20 percent that. But I would really assume since it says analysis in the title, you know, you're probably spending the bulk of the paper. So maybe half of the paper on that analysis piece on your explanation of what you saw and why that was so important. Okay, so definitely make sure that you're focusing in on that. Hey, guys, I want to just continue to tell you, you know, you guys have been doing a great job. Uh, there's been a lot of really good stuff that you've been doing. Uh, I've been totally impressed. I've been also super impressed with the fact that you guys have been keeping up with everything. You guys are just flying through stuff. Uh, we have five weeks, right? It, this is, again, amazing to me that we're already that far along. Uh, make sure that you continue to reach out if there's something that you need. Uh, you need help on something, please make sure you're emailing uh, or you're texting or calling, making sure that you have that information that you need. Um, and um, good luck, guys. I can't wait to see what you can do.